Hello everyone, this is Jared with Data Medics. Welcome to part three of my video series, How to Clone a Hard Drive with Bad Sectors. Uh, in this video, we're going to be going over uh, how to use the, the tool HDD Super Clone in order to clone a hard drive that has bad sectors. It's a program similar to DD Rescue, but it actually comes with a graphical user interface. It's quite a cool tool. Uh, just to introduce myself, my name is Jared. I'm with Data Medics. We're a professional data recovery services company. You can visit our homepage, data-medics.com, and check us out and visit our forum if you want more information about uh, performing data recovery and uh, learning more about data recovery and how to get data off of failed devices. So we're going to go ahead and get started here. Now, as uh, with our previous video, we're uh, booted into a live version of Parrot OS Linux. Uh, this is a Debian-based version of Linux that we're going to be using. Uh, so <clears throat> what we're going to want to do here is uh, first we're going to want to install. Uh, now, if you haven't already done so, you're going to want to go into your terminal. You're going to want to do your sudo apt-get update. Uh, we've already done that, so there's no need for us to do that. And then you're going to want to make sure uh, to add in a program such as hwinfo if you want to be able to analyze which drive is which and get a little bit more detail. So you might want to do... Uh, Info. Go ahead and install that. Uh, that can provide some useful details because then later on, once you've done that, we can just type hwinfo dash dash short. And this way here, it makes it very easy to identify our hard drives. We can uh, get information about them, get our partitions, help us figure out which drive is which that we want to be working with. So, just as we did with DD Rescue about uh, the previous video, uh, you're going to want to be able to quickly identify your drives. Make sure to write those down, not get confused with which drive is because there's no forgiveness when it comes to cloning data in the wrong direction. So if you haven't already done so, we're going to want to download and install the HDD Super Clone software. So uh, go to Google, start with Google, just search HDD Super Clone. It takes a few steps to find the actual download from the website. Super clone, download, download area. Super clone, click. You're going to want the latest version and the one that correlates to the type of Linux you're using. So we're using a Debian build. There's also for uh, Red Hot, but we're using Red Hat. So I'm going to go for this one here 64 bit version for Debian. And I'm just going to right click and say download. Um, now, if you do right-click and say download, it's going to give the option to just automatically open with the package installer. This is probably going to get an error because your browser is not running in super user mode. So you're going to want to go ahead and just hit save file rather than open. And then you're going to want to launch it from the file explorer. So I've already downloaded this, so we can just go into our downloads. And then click where it says open containing folder. Let's go ahead and click that. So we're actually now in our file browser rather than in our web browser. File browser generally will be running in super user. So now we can go ahead and just open it with our package installer. And then you're going to hit install package. For me, it says reinstall package because I've already run this. Uh, but normally you would just see one button that would say install package. Click that, let it run for a moment, and then it's going to be installed. All right, so once that's finished, you're going to go ahead, just like we did with DD Rescue, we're going to go ahead into a terminal. And then, as always, we're going to want to use it as a super user, so sudo super this. And then we're going to just go ahead and run a super clone. And right away, you're going to notice it's going to pop up asking about our language preferences. So if you want to continue with English, simply press continue, or you could change your language. I'm just going to hit continue. Now, one thing you want to be aware of is that uh, this terminal window is necessary to remain open the whole time. If I close this terminal window, it's going to actually close the program. So rather than closing this, just make sure to minimize it, uh, keep it out of your way so you don't accidentally close it. Uh, so now the next thing we need to do is to create a project file. So I'm going to go ahead and say new project and figure out where to save it. So let's go to user. Desktop, 
All right, so we're just going to call this project. You don't have to give it any sort of extension. You just have to give it a name. It's going to create a file, uh, very much like the log file with DD Rescue. What this file does is it's a file that's used by the program to keep track of uh, data that has and hasn't been read yet by the program. That way there it can skip around more intelligently the, the bad sectors or the bad areas and it's able to extract as much data as possible. So you have to, this program actually forces you to create the project file. You can't skip it like you can with DD Rescue. Uh, so we create this project file, just give it a name, select a location, and you press open, even though there's, we're not selecting an existing file. Select open, which will create the project file. Next, we have to select our devices. So we first select our source drive. So let's go ahead and say uh, we want to rescue this USB drive that I have connected. Now, uh, we're getting an error here, probably because it's trying to read information about drives that are protected by this system. Uh, this is The system has a secure boot drive and TPMI module and all that sort of fun thing. So you might get an error or two. Uh, but eventually, if you close out those errors, you should get to a point like this where you're, you have a list of source drives that you can select from. Now, I'm just going to go ahead and select this device here, SDC. It's just a generic thumb drive that I have plugged into the system. Uh, now, when you click it, you notice nothing really seems to change. If you look carefully, it's very vaguely highlighted. It might be easier to see on different color themes. I, I'm using this sort of dark theme, but I've noticed even on the lighter themes, it's still not the most visible. Um, but just make sure you click the one that you want as your source, and then press OK. All right, so we see our source now is set to device SDC. So that's the device we're going to actually read data from. So that's the, the device we want to rescue data from. Next, we have to choose our destination. Now, right now it says null because we haven't set a destination. So when we set destination, we have a few options here. We could do a generic block device. Uh, that's going to pull up, again, a list of all of our block devices. Uh, so here's the systems SSD, that's NVMe device, uh, SDC, which is actually our source device. It probably won't, won't let us do that if we even wanted to. Another USB, which is what we've booted this computer off, or even a loop device, which can be useful in certain cases. So, uh, But that's getting into some pretty advanced stuff. Uh, but instead, what we're going to do is we're just going to go ahead and use an image file. So in this case, instead of imaging from a from one drive directly to another drive, we're just going to create an image file that we can then use with data recovery software or whatever uh, software to mount that image file we want to use uh, once it's done imaging. So I'm just going to go ahead and select image file. As usual, it's going to pop up and offer to create a file. So I'll go to user desktop, and then we're going to give it a name. So USB bin. I'm just going to give it the bin file extension to indicate that it's a binary file. Uh, it doesn't really matter too much what you give the extension, but something like bin is very universal. It tells data recovery programs and things that it's a plain binary image. There's no compression or anything fancy going on. And uh, we'll just go ahead and leave it at that. So hit open. Let's just double check. Home user desktop USB underscore image dot bin. Now, we don't see the, the project file or the uh, image file yet, but once I hit connect and start, we should see those appear on our desktop. So I'm going to go ahead and hit connect, and as you can see, the, uh, the bin file here now created itself. Uh, I don't see the project file, but that could be because there's no extension. It might be that Linux just isn't showing us the extensionless file in this graphical user interface. But now that we're connected to the drives, it's ready to begin imaging. Now, we have different options here that we could change. You know, we, we notice we have a soft reset button, a hard reset button. Um, because I'm on a thumb drive, those aren't going to do much of anything. But if you had a hard drive, uh, sometimes sending this soft or hard reset command could kind of snap it out of a point where it's maybe getting stuck and not responding for a little bit. You could try wrapping on these buttons and see if it'll go ahead and snap out of it. Uh, we could check the smart status of the drive. It's uh, supported on this cheap thumb drive, but if you click that on the hard drive, you should get a full readout of information from the smart uh, recording of the drive. Uh, you can set your clone mode. Now, because I'm using the free version right now, uh, you're just going to notice it says slow driver, which is not really all that slow. It should actually work just fine. Uh, if you have the pro version, there's a lot of different settings we can change. Uh, we could change our clone settings. Uh, you know, we can adjust a lot of these uh, parameters, you know, what skip size we want. 
Uh, one beautiful thing about HDD Super Clone is it's very self-adjusting. The developer of this had in mind uh, being able to clone hard drives that had perhaps a failed read-write head. Uh, we have many of these hard drives that may have eight or ten read-write heads and only one of those has failed. So this tool is actually has algorithms that are very good at skipping around and learning kind of how big the bad areas are typically. So the program actually kind of learns as it goes. So generally speaking, most of these settings, the jump sizes, um, you can pretty much just leave alone. You don't really need to do a whole lot with that. Uh, but if you want to change your read mode, if you have the pro version, you could hit disconnect. Uh, you could change your read modes. Uh, you'll notice also you have like power off, power on. Uh, but these are obviously going to require an external relay to be set up on your system, which if you're using a Linux Live, you're probably not going to have that all set up and configured. Uh, so. But assuming this is just a typical case of a hard drive with some bad sectors, you can simply connect, make sure your destination and source are set to exactly what you want them to, and go ahead and click Start. And you're going to notice it's going to start cloning data. You're going to see this little preview of data, so you can see there's actual sectors being read with very random looking data. And ah, there's our project file. So here's our project file, our log file, and the binary image that's being created now of this thumb drive. So. Uh, I hope you found this useful. Uh, this tool is really powerful. Um, I found that especially for like SAS and SCSI drives, uh, there are times where this tool actually is much faster than DD Rescue uh, for being able to keep the drive stable and then jump around those damaged bad sector areas. Uh, it's a really powerful tool. Uh, the developer has put an immense amount of work into this project. Um, if he does open source it, I highly recommend, please donate to his cause. This is a great program. Uh, to be honest, I, I've found that in many cases, uh, this program is every bit as good as a DeepSpar disk imager. There's only really certain cases where DeepSpar has much advantage over this program. Uh, it's probably one of the, it's probably, it is, I, I would say hands down, it's the most powerful software cloning tool that you can use for a hard drive with bad sectors. So give it an install, give it a try. Let me know how, in the, how it works out for you in the comments below. Uh, as always, please be sure to uh, visit our forum, uh, data-medics.com slash forum. Uh, there's data recovery experts from around the world who use our forum to discuss the current projects they're working on and cases and problems with uh, data recovery situations. So be sure to check that out. If you're looking for some specific DIY help, please visit there and uh, ask for some assistance, describe your case and what's going on. And if you give up and decide you need professional services, we're always there to help. So again, this is Jared with Data Medics. Thanks for watching, and be sure to smash that subscribe button.